all right so i'm about to build a cinewhoop drone for my personal project and i decided to buy the hglrc veyron 30 cinewhoop frame and i have some electronic parts that will go along with the build but the main focus of this video is this uh, all-in-one flight controller and it's from hglrc as well and it's called as the zeus so zeus 25 v2 all-in-one flight controller so let me just unbox this So there's a quality check certificate, a few stickers, the flight controller plus ESC. So in the package I've got a XT30 connector, but I'll be using a XT60 instead. And then we have, uh, I guess, a cable for the DJI Air unit. A few rubber gummies and a capacitor and this is the instruction manual so for the HL RC Veyron or uh, Cinewhoop frame you can either use 20 by 20 or 25 by 25 mm uh, flight controller and ESC so that's the reason why I went with this uh, all-in-one unit this comes with beta flight pre-installed but obviously I'll have to update that it's got a MPU 6000 gyro in it and it has a BEC of 5 volt 2 amp it's got a black box as well up to 8 megabytes and it has 5 UARTs and here we have the specifications for the ESC and because it's an all-in-one unit it does have current sensor so 25 amps constant current and peak current of 30 amps here we have the motor diagram so XT30 or XT60 3 to 6S uh, LiPo uh, input and here we have the wiring diagram all right so here we have a close-up of the flight controller so this is the front direction of the flight controller and that's represented by this arrow over here the first motor will be connected over here and we have M1 labeled just beside that followed by motor 2 motor 3 and motor 4 we have the usb connector then here we have the boot button to enter the dfu mode stm32 f722 uh, processor the osd chip and here on the back side we can see how the esc is laid out so the good thing is uh, all the sorting that needs to be done is on the upper side or the top section so that way uh, I don't have to solder any wires on the back side as such because then it's uh, difficult to solder the components and then install the flight controller unlike the Matic F722 flight controller uh, which I have on my Martian 2 at the moment so very quickly just uh, let's glance through all the soldering points and see how the connections are laid out I mean although we just had a look at uh, the manual let's just take a look at in person so this is where you will connect your battery lead along with the capacitor so this one is the 5 volts and here we have the ground and this one is the LED strip one and just beside that we have the buzzer pad if you want to use a LED or a buzzer you will have to utilize these four pads over here for the power and the uh, connection for the LED or the buzzer so that's one part over there and just beside that we have the UART number 6 to which you can connect a receiver so we have TX6 and RX6 and then 5 volts and ground so according to the manual this side of the flight controller can be used to connect a receiver then here we have a GSD connector and this is basically if you want to connect a DJI or air unit and the cable for that is included in the box so you can use this so if you're planning to build a HD setup you can utilize this port but if you're not using a HD setup then you can utilize a UART from this port because uh, according to the manual so if I orient the board in this direction the very first pin is the battery voltage the next we have is the ground then third pin is the TX4 the fourth one is the RX4. So this is the fourth UART. 
the fifth pin is the ground and the sixth pin is the RX1 so if you're using a HD setup and you want to use SBUS then that's what uh, the sixth pin is for although I'm not sure on that because I've never used a HD system before and then we have a few more pads so this one is the camera connection so the video feed from the camera will be connected over here then the next two pads are the ground so both of these are ground and these are the 5 volt connections and beside that we have the VTX pad so the video feed for the VTX will be connected over here and just below that we have RX3 and TX3 so the third UART is over here and this pad over here is also a TX connection so this is the TX2 pad so the TX2 and the TX3 connection can be used to use smart audio or camera control now because this is a version 2 of the flight controller there are a few differences compared to the version 1 so with the version 1 there used to be a current sensor pad on this side over here but with the version 2 that I have with me the current sensor is actually uh, set up directly in the circuit board so we don't have to solder the current sensor pad or anything as such now the second difference is to do with the BEC so in the version 1 there used to be a 10 volt and a 5 volt output pad over here but in the version 2 we have two 5 volt output pads so there is no 10 volt output on this uh, version 2 of the flight controller and that's actually a bit disappointing because uh, usually to power up the VTX on the camera we might need somewhere around 6 to 10 volts and actually the camera that I have is rated from 6 to 18 volts or so so I might have to solder the VTX and the camera power connections on the battery lead side so that's how I plan to power up the VTX and camera and the third difference is to do with the boot button so in the version 1 the boot button used to be somewhere over here but now it's relocated on this side and other than that I don't find any differences as such now there is a bit of a controversy when it comes to HGLRC electronics uh, mostly because this is fairly a new company and the electronics that they have made in the past had a few quality check issues so there have been cases where people have reported that the USB port could break or the microcontroller could fry and there was some grounding issue where the connections would short out and the ESC would burn up but since this is a version 2 it's a revised version I believe this won't have any problems as such so anyways that's all I had to share on this uh, all-in-one flight controller from HGLRC very soon I'll be installing this on the HGLRC Cinebook frame and then share that in the upcoming video so stay tuned for that and before I end this video let's just take a look at the motors that I have so here I have the Aeolus motors from HGLRC 1404 2800 kV brushless motors and these are in the golden and black color so here we have a close-up look of the motor bell so we have a 1.5 millimeter motor shaft and we have four holes to install the propellers with M2 screws and underneath the motor you can see the magnets and the mounting bracket and if I spin the bell I can actually feel the torquiness of the motor so so if you notice the bell doesn't spin very freely as such and that's due to the strength of the magnets so it seems the motor is quite powerful now although this is a 2800 kV motor as per the specifications on the website from HGLRC we can use a 4S or a 6S LiPo battery and uh, use these motors so it has a good balance between the power input and the KV rating so at the moment I have 4S batteries for my Martian 2 and I might use those to power up this drone as well but if I feel like using a 6S LiPo then I might do that and then we have a couple of screws in the box and I do like the color combination on this motor the golden finish along with the black color does look good and it definitely adds a style to the design of the motor as well and it is quite tiny so it's almost the size of my thumbnail and it's light in weight so it's best 
for a Cinewhoop like this. So if you found this video helpful or informative, you could like it and subscribe to my channel. And stay tuned for the next video where we will take a look at the HLRC Veyron frame and see how to assemble it. So thanks a lot for watching.